Hey guys, I'm the Coaster Keat and welcome back to Aviary Attorney. Now today is going to be a relatively short episode, just purely because it's late and I'm recording this video after I finished my assignments, which to be honest is a good thing because I actually prioritized school over videos, which, you know, probably a good idea. Um, but it does mean that it is a bit late, so we're probably not going to be going as long as I might want to. Anyways, last time we went through the whole court case sort of thing with a rat as our judge. A very impatient rat, in fact. And he wanted the trial to be over very quickly, but we very cleverly managed to find a little bit of a hole in our rival's... Um, whole plan and with that managed to break the case open wide enough to give us an extra day to figure out what the heck we're doing with our lives. So with all of that, let's get right on back into it. So what are we doing today? Playing cards until we're flat out broke? Maybe. Let's see. To the card room. <laughs> we can make money here. It's true. Alright, well, we're gonna just do another round because, you know, good plans. Alright, let's do it. Good old round of blackjack. Ooh, an eight. Oh, I should hit again. I'm gonna stand on that one. Alright. Oh, come on, you got exactly 21, are you kidding me? Fine. I'm out of here. No, I'm done. Freaking card shark. <sighs> Falcon and Sparrow Sun returned to the drinking floor, but nobody appears to be interested in conversation. Well, this was a waste of time. <sighs> I really have to learn which places are a waste of time, so this one is um, because it's just to get... Uh, what's it called? It's just to get money. Uh, so, this place, just to get money. This place, just to check out suspects. And then we've got the prison, which is probably a good place to go. And the palace, which we pretty thoroughly investigated the other day. We could try to go to the Chocolate Emporium and ask about that one person. But I think a good... I think we should go ahead and go to the prison first. You again. Visiting hours are over. Come back later. I have no time for your quibbling, Monjour. Stand aside. You can't talk to me like that. I most certainly can. We have reason to believe that you are housing a suspect under false pretenses. That is in direct violation of statutes 204B and 488C of the French Criminal Code of Justice. Failure to comply with our request may result in you, yes you, Monsieur, being held directly responsible for any consequential legal action. Alright, alright. No need to beak out break out the legalese on me. I'll go up in the cell. Wow, Falcon. How did you memorize those criminal codes? Why do I get the feeling that he just pulled those out of his... Memorize? Come on, Sparrowson. Learn how to bluff. Indeed he did. The music gets me every time. And I always have to wait for it to end because it's so loud. Ah, Senor Falcon. It is so good to see you again. You have some good news about my case, I hope. Confront politely or confront angrily? Let's confront politely. <laughs> Listen, Juan. In order to ma maximize our chances of a successful trial, I need to know every bit of information. I can't work with half-truths. If you tell me one thing and the prosecution's evidence tells me another, then we're both in trouble. I'm afraid I don't quite follow, senor. Do you want me to spell it out? I know that you are not the Prince of Spain. I know that your name is not Juan Quierdo. Where is this coming from? I assure you, senor, that I am who I claim to be. If you want your trial to be a farce, then you don't need my help. Come, Sparrow Sun, we're leaving. Wait, wait, wait. Calm yourself, Monsieur Falcon. I'll reveal all. Did you just say, Monsieur, what happened to your Spanish accent? Your suspicions are well placed. Juan Quierdo is not my real name, and I am not a Spanish prince. 
There was just a persona I concocted for the purpose of getting arrested. So what is your real name? What's in a name? It's just an empty label, a vapid reflection of who we really are. Today I am Juan Quiero, the Prince of Spain. Tomorrow I may be Bruno Rayer, a pauper living under a bridge of the scene. But that doesn't change who I am or what I do. That doesn't really answer my question. No, I suppose it didn't. But you're a smart bird, Monsieur Falcon. I suspect that you already know my real name. Oh, frick, I do not. Um, uh, 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 uh. Are you the investigator? Maybe? You're Renard Volpez, private investigator. Ah, good, I, I got it right, guys. <laughs> I didn't fail. Very astute, and you are Monsieur Falcon, private defense attorney. But that wasn't always your name, was it, Monsieur Falcon? Just like me, you know how to adopt a new persona on a whim. You changed your name, Falcon? I didn't know that. This isn't about me, Juan, Renard, Monsieur. We're trying to uncover the truth here. Of course. So what is it that you are attempting to uncover, Monsieur Falcon? Why would you want to get arrested? Hmm. You're putting me in a difficult position, Monsieur. If I tell you the full story, I would be putting someone else in danger. How about this? I'll tell you a story. I like stories. There was a girl. Mademoiselle, who is in a great deal of debt. Everyone has a debt these days, Monsieur. Indeed. But this particular Mademoiselle was indebted to a very powerful man. And that man wished to, wished to collect. The Mademoiselle had no means of paying, so the man offered her a deal. Murder this man, and I will forget what you are owed. Refuse, and I will reap what I am owed from your parents. With no alternative options, the Mademoiselle accepted. But another man, a gallant knight with foolish, archaic notions of chivalry, heard the Mademoiselle's story. The knight knew that murder was inevitable, but he saw a way to take the fall in the Mademoiselle's place. Do you understand what I am saying, Monsieur? I understand, Monsieur. To be honest, it wasn't the subtlest of allegories. Ah, storytelling was never my strong suit. But I am glad that you're seeing things from my perspective. Hopefully, this sheds some light on the situation. If I may ask, Monsieur, how did you not just go to the police with the information that you had? Police are not always an option. What is a man to do when the justice system itself is the problem? I'll let you know when I figure it out, Monsieur. Dwell on it. Perhaps we should talk about something else in the meantime? That's all. I don't have any more questions for you, Juan. I think we've learned all we can for now. Really? I don't feel that we've learned very much. Oh, Monsieur Falcon, before I forget, could you find Mousy and ask him where the birds have successfully flown south for the winter? Whether the birds have flown south? What, what is that? Some sort of code? Something like that. But rest assured, Monsieur, that this does directly pertain to the case. Well, if we have time, I'll be sure to let Mousy know. Let's make a move, Sparrow Sun. Trial day is approaching. Uh, right. Alright, well, I think I know who bought the chocolate. Not that we have time to go investigate that. I'm feeling pretty confident about this case. The big picture is coming together nicely. I'm somewhat relieved that Prince Juan came clean. His secret was putting the whole case in jeopardy. We still have one day until trial, but how to spend it? I suppose we could revisit the Louvre, or maybe we should just play some cards at La Carna Joyas. Something wrong, Sparrow Son. You're being unusually quiet. Falcon, we need to talk. What's up? See, I was doing some thinking. Dangerous thing to do, I know. Anyway, I realized that we were missing a crucial piece of evidence. What evidence would that be? Well, we know that Major Hal consumed a piece of chocolate before he died, and we know that he, can, he died of poisoning. But we still aren't sure that the chocolate was the cause. That's true. If we keep pushing the chocolate theory, Coca Rica will almost certainly bring that up. So I thought to myself, if one were to consume the wrapper itself, that may provide proof of whether it contains traces of poison. 
Well, sure, that could work, but it would be incredibly foolish. Wait, were you thinking of eating the wrapper, Sparrowson? Or more accurately, have you already eaten the wrapper, Sparrowson? Maybe. Well, stop those thoughts right now. I'm not going to let you potentially kill yourself like that. <laughs> I knew you would say that. That's why I already consumed the wrapper. Forty-five minutes ago. Gosh darn it, Sparrowson. Sparrowson! Sparrowson! <laughs> you fucking idiot. This idiot. I swear. This freaking idiot. And Doctor, is Sparrowson okay? Well, he's not conscious right now, but he is stable. I think it's safe to say that your friend's not on his deathbed. Oh, thank God. How did you say this happened again? It's... A long story, lawyering, occupational hazard. Doctor, can you tell me what poison caused this? I have no idea. I'm an expert in mental health, not toxicology. And what the frick are you doing here? When I have sent for a specialist who should be here by tomorrow morning, you'll make a full assessment. That's good to hear. Thanks, doctor. Take good care of him. Wait a moment. There is the matter of the bill. We'll have to discuss it later. I have an important case to prepare for, and I'm one partner down. I see. Well, rest assured that your friend is good in good hands. This is terrible. What the hell was Sparrowson thinking? I can't win a case like this. You. I finally found you. Did someone say something? Running around like a headless chicken. You're one tricky lawyer to find. I told you to drop the investigation, but you just wouldn't listen. Who's speaking? I can't see you, Muncher. Step forward. All right, I'll step forward. But it'll be the last thing you ever see. Well, shoot. We just got pushed in the river. Are we dead now? <laughs> Is this how it ends? Au revoir, JJ Falcon. The frick just happened! Yeah, what just happened? <laughs> Where am I? Am I dead? No, that can't be right. This is nighttime. I'm just sleeping. If I focus and count to three, I should be able to wake up. One, two. The heck? Did it work? Caterline, what are you doing here? I can't believe how easy you were to fool. I put on a cutesy voice, acted all innocent, and you ate the whole thing up. Silence. I shouldn't be surprised. There are no words that excuse the heinous act of putting an innocent man on death row. It wasn't my fault. Hey, where are you going? Out of my way, Severin. I am not done talking to Dame Catiline. It wasn't my fault. Is that the excuse you make after all of your failures? I'm not making excuses. Failure after failure after failure. Your desire to improve yourself. You're a joke of a lawyer, JJ. Don't call me JJ. That's all you have to say. How pathetic. You don't even deserve to stand in your grandfather's shadow. My... My grandfather. I'll prove you wrong. I can do better. Oh, it's you, Sparrowson. Have you come to berate me too? What? No, no, I'm just here to tell you to wake up. Wake up, Monsieur. Wake up. Hey, can you hear me? I said wake up. Well, this has been one heck of a day. And now we're on a bridge. Oh, getting fished up by the fisher. Come on, mature. Wake up! I said wake up! You're starting to worry me. Oh, thank goodness. I wasn't sure whether I would have to find a doctor or a mortician. Ugh. My head. Where am I? The Pointe d'Arts, you know, by the Louvre in Paris, France. I just fished you out of the sea and nearly broke my rod doing it. Wait! I know you! You're that disrespectful lawyer guy! Jiro Falco or something! What time is it? Actually, what day is it? You hit your head pretty hard, huh? It's 21st of January, and around 9 o'clock in the morning by my reckoning. 21st. 
Nine o'clock. Oh no, the trial! I should have been at Cordiasen's ten minutes ago. Well, you're running late. Take it easy, Monsieur. I'm sure they'll be understanding. Maybe if I sprint it. In your condition? That'd be stupid. Take a seat. Clear, clear your head. I'll go get some dry clothes. No time. Wait, Monsieur. At least take this before you go. What's this? A dip pen? No, wait. It's a modern fount fountain pen. Bone handle. Gold nib. Very fancy. Thanks, Monsieur, but this isn't mine. Really? You sure? You are holding it pretty tightly when I found you. I was holding this. Then, I suppose it has to be mine. Thanks, fisherman. I owe you one. Yeah, I knew that was coming. Hey! I am not a fisherman! Well then. It's nine o'clock. I believe it's time for the roll call. Is the defense not present? <laughs> Such unprofessionalism! If there is no defense, then this trial cannot proceed any further. We must make a ruling based on the evidence that has already been presented. I will now converse with the jury. We shall decide whether Prince Juan is guilty of murdering Major Hal and of conspiring to murder the king. Your Honor, may I have a word? Fine, but make it quick. I'm a firm believer that a trial must be orderly and punctual. There is no room for a wishy-washy dilly-dally. But it seems somewhat rash to end a trial session the moment it is due to start. Perhaps it would be prudent to wait five or ten minutes in case the defense is just a little tardy. Then the trial still has a chance to proceed and justice will be served. You are the prosecution, are you not? You have nothing to worry about. A guilty verdict is all but guaranteed. Your Honor, you appear confused. I'm not here to secure a guilty verdict. Of course you are. You're a prosecutor. By definition, you're here to prosecute. No! My job description is to prosecute, but I am here in this courtroom to ensure that justice is served. An unfair and unbalanced trial is not in the spirit of justice. That's very noble of you, but if the defense is absent, then there is little that can be done. I'll hear no more about this matter. I will now talk with the jury. The, <sighs> the defense is present, Your Honor. You are too late, Falcon. Mon Dieu, Jeter, you look like a total mess. Did you take a morning swim in the Seine or something? S something like that? Your Honor, we are all present. We are only three minutes over schedule. You're not needlessly dirty, the pro name of justice. Rules are rules, Prosecutor. Falcon clearly has no respect for legal procedure. Frankly, for turning up while looking like a drowned rat, I ought to hold him in contempt of court. Your Honor. <sighs> but Your Honor... Rules are rules. One more word out of other of you, and I shall have you both disbarred. It's a pity. King of France was most looking forward to standing behind the witness podium. The... The King of France? He's here? Oh, well, we were not doing the trial after all. That's a pity. Uh... Your Majesty, what a surprise! We, uh, well, you see. You know, it's my seventh time testifying against a would be assassin. But it's the first time seeing a trial where the case was ended before it even began. Well, the defense, uh, he was late and, uh. Oh, pish posh! France said it become a great and dignified kingdom through rigorous punctuality. Let's go ahead with this trial. It'll be fun. Look, I'll say the oath to get us started. I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Did I get it right? That was perfect, Your Majesty. JJ, I trust you have no objections with the king testifying. No, no objections here. Going ahead with the trial is fine with me. And surely you wouldn't stand in the way of the king, would you, Your Honor? Fine. Proceed with this cursed trial. Excellent. Now, your majesty, could you tell us of your activities on the day of the murder? My activities? Uh, 
My activities? Well, I started my day with tea and toast as I normally do. I was dressed in my TJs at the time. I think you can skip ahead a little. Perhaps to your arrival at the Louvre? Ah, right, of course. Well, my entourage and I entered through the Louvre's south entrance around 9 o'clock. We passed through the Salle de Tuber with little fanfare. At the Grand Gallery, I unveiled the new painting and gave a short speech to inspire the citizens who attended. That's when I was approached by a man claiming to be the Prince of Spain. He presented a rose, which was taken by Major Howell, and, well, I think you know the rest. Indeed we do, Your Majesty. Madams and Marshals of the Court, what we have here is another testimony that establishes Prince Juan's guilt. And this is no ordinary testimony. It is the testimony of perhaps the most trustworthy man in all of France. Oh, you flatter me, Prosecutor. But I am the trustworthiest in all the kingdom, aren't I? I have no doubts, Your Majesty. Nonetheless, I would like to perform a cross-examination. How dare you doubt your king, the utter nerve! Oh, calm yourself, Judge. I have no qualms with standard legal procedure. Defense, please proceed. I want to see your best courtroom drama material. All right, and we will go ahead and continue this investigation next time. So for now, thank you all so much for watching, and I hope that you all soar high and enjoy your ride of life. Bye!